Hey everybody, I'm Katie, and welcome to Head of the Class. Today I am joined by Mrs. Mary Maslack, one of Freedom Project Academy's elementary teachers who has been with FPA since 2015. Mrs. Maslack, you teach the upper echelon of our elementary students, the fifth graders. You also have educational experience in learning disabilities. Tell us why you chose this career path and what it means for you to be a teacher. Uh, well, you know, I chose this career path because um, I homeschooled for a number of years. I homeschooled my own children um, for over 20, like 26 years, and I knew that homeschooling was the way to go. And it was, was this is just a way for me to, um, uh, to continue that on uh, after my children were, were grown. And I've really, really enjoyed that of going from, you know, teaching for three years in the public and private settings and then coming, you know, being off teaching my own children for a number of years. It, it just seemed like it was a good, a good fit. Um, so. <laughs> All right. Well, our fifth grade students are kind of in their final year before making that transition to navigating their education a bit more on their own. So how do you arrange your classroom and engage with the students in this online format so that they are begin to kind of start taking that responsibility for their education? Well, you know, there is a lot of things that have to be done at, through FPA uh, and and still in the fifth grade, you do have parental support and assistance. And I think it's a great grade to teach. I love it. Absolutely. And um, the parents are instrumental in getting that um, kind of thing going with the children. If if we have a um, we have everything that's due and it's due on a certain day and everything consistent very, very consistent at this age, and, and, and they have to hand everything in in a certain way, just holding them accountable and making them go back and fix it is, is if it's wrong, is something that um, we do. And I think we do it rather well, preparing them for the upper grades and being responsible for their own education in, within the fifth grade. And teaching fifth grade, it keeps you quite busy, I'm sure. So when you aren't being this super teacher, what is it that you like to do with your time? Uh, you know, I like to cook. Um, I, I, your, your changes, your, your things change over the years. You know what you have time for and what you don't have time for. Uh, I used to quilt and sew quite a bit, and there's just not a whole lot of time for that anymore. Um, plus, you know, teaching online can be um, challenging in the in the fact that you have to constantly be um, online and uh, doing those kind of uh, intricate things. Uh, online and, and quilting doesn't fit in very well anymore. But um, I do love to cook. Cook Cooking has is, is really been one of my passions. Um, I, I do like to make new recipes and do things like that. All right. And <laughs> you do have more than two decades of teaching experience between, you know, homeschooling your own children and being in, you know, private and public settings. So what mm -hmm. was very specific about FPA that kind of drew you in to teach for us? Well, you know, my son, my, old, my youngest son, um, decided to go to a college that had a classical curriculum. And although I did teach a bit of classical curriculum, I avoided certain things like the plague, such as, you know, logic. <laughs> and um, and I knew he was going to need that kind of thing, uh, Latin. Um, and, he, and, and so we signed up for a few classes in, at FPA, and it was beautiful. Uh, worked out just fabulously, um, especially, oh, that biology teacher, Mrs. Hag, is awesome. And I just thought I would love to do this. And then it just so happened that they had placed a, a, a advertisement, I guess, uh, on the email that we were receiving that they were looking for teachers. And um, I thought, oh, I'll apply. I'll give it a try. And um, when they offered me the fifth grade, I was very excited because I have had the experience of teaching the total kindergarten through high school. Um, and I do know that's a, I, I love third through about fifth or sixth grade the very most. And so when they offered me the fifth grade position, I jumped on it. And we're glad that you did. Now, before we wrap up, uh, I want to do a little bit of a quick fire. So answer the following questions as quickly as you can. If you okay. could, please provide five words to describe you. Ooh. Well, I'd like to think that I'm patient. <laughs> you might have to ask those around me. My brother says I am. Um, I think I'm hospitable. We have a lot of people that stay at our home, and I love it, and they stay longer than they say they're ever going to stay to, so I imagine they do, um, and they feel comfortable. Um, I, I would say fortitude. It's an important thing to be able to stay with something, um, for even if it's difficult. Um, I see myself, I guess, as kind. Um, 
understanding. And I think I'm funny. I think that's six. But that I think I'm six. funny. That's okay. <laughs> we'll take it. All right. How about what are four of your favorite places to travel to or maybe travel recommendations you have for people? Well, Cody, Wyoming, that's where I'm from. Let me tell you, <laughs> we have Yellowstone and everything here. There's just something for everybody here. I'm always inviting people to come. And a lot of times people do, and they just have a, they have a ball. There's just something for everybody in, uh, in there. And it's just beautiful, amazing place to visit. Um, I guess if I were to travel, I have traveled. Um, I, I, I think I've, I've really enjoyed uh I think Italy the best. Italy, maybe Croatia. I'd love to explore that area some other time, not now. And <laughs> I, um, I would, I would like to think that everybody should probably see Hawaii. Uh, it's just such a different place, and I'd like to go to Alaska. Yet I'm going to go. <laughs> I think that's five, but we'll take them all. Oh, all right. <laughs> How about three book recommendations, or I guess what are your three favorite books? Um, I like um, I like historical fiction mostly. Um, I, I I like a lot of different books depending on my mood, I guess. Um, of some of the the ones that I really like, um, I like a book called Chardash, um, and Postcards from the Volcano, uh, In the Shadow of His Wings, um, and I think oh here we go four again. <laughs> We'll take I think everybody ought to read a Louis L'Amour book. Um, I like Lonesome God's Best. I just think that he's a fun author. Okay, and for your fifth graders, what are your two favorite subjects to teach? I love to teach reading. Uh, we have some beautiful classical curricul uh, cl classical um, type of uh, novels to read, historical fiction almost. And so it's it's been really a lot of fun to watch the kids read those and to get excited about um, the different things and challenge them. They're they're not um, they're they're not real easy fifth grade reads. Uh, the other thing that um, I really am surprised I like to teach because of what I just said. I really love teaching those kids Latin. They're like little sponges. And um, I've learned a ton. They've learned a ton. And we all just keep learning. And it's just amazing to me to tie that to other subjects. You know, we do science, uh, anatomy and things like that. English, it ties to our English. And it's, and it's just so fun to watch the kids uh, tie that together. All and right. It's, and it's beautiful. And finally, what's one piece of advice you have for your students? I think, um, well, you have to learn to think. Um, and I know that sounds like a silly thing, but pulling those, those things together, asking yourself the questions that you need to do, uh, tying subjects together, um, I think is, is really one of the most important things to do because it, it aids in your learning throughout life. And at this stage in the game, fifth graders are really able to do that well. Um, they start to, um, get to that place in their education where they can mentally rotate things and, and pull that together. And I think that's very, very important is to learn how to ask yourself the right questions so that you can really become a good thinker. All right, Mrs. Maslack, thank you so much for being here today. Learn more about our amazing teachers and Freedom Project Academy at fpeusa.org.